Um, welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Remixing Politics and Culture with me, your host, Pam. I am a public relations and marketing professional with a passion for social justice, voter advocacy, and culture. And thank you so much for stopping by to uh, check out the show this evening and to participate. Participation is really important to me, and it makes it more fun and interactive for our guests and for as a listening audience. Um, you can do so by clicking into the chat, or you can, I have the uh, StreamYard link in the chat already, and you can click onto it to come on stage to talk to the um, guests or, or not. Okay. All right. So now I'm very excited to have the two women that I have invited this evening. One of them isn't here just yet. I hope that she will show up, but they're both very dynamic uh, women. They have fantastic backgrounds. Both come from rural communities in North Carolina. Um, they're both servant leaders and now they are mayor elects of their respective towns. Um, first up was uh, the person who isn't here. So I'm going to bring up now mayor elect Barbara Fushi. And I'm going to tell you all a few things about her. Okay. So Barbara is a native of Warsaw, North Carolina, in Duplin County, also a rural area of the state of North Carolina. And to give you perspective of that, for those of you who aren't familiar with North Carolina, um, her town is not too far away from Wilmington, North Carolina, close by the beautiful beaches here in North Carolina. <clears throat> Excuse me. Barbara attended school at the HBCU St. Augustine's College now it's known as St. Augustine's University. And uh, in doing so, she had to move to the state capital of Raleigh. She majored in medical technology and works professionally as a senior technologist in a molecular oncology lab. She spent her 30 plus year career in clinical laboratory services and loves her, her work profession. Fushi is deeply committed to community service, which I'd like to say is an extension of her commitment to our beloved sorority, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. She is an executive member of the Carborough NAACP, past president of the Chapel Hill Zetas, co-chair of the Community Awareness and Political Action Ministry at her church, First Baptist Church of Chapel Hill, a former mentor with Blue Ribbon Mentor Advocate and past member of OWASA Board of Directors. Of course, people asked her to serve in local government. Look at all the stuff she's done already in the community. Um, and of course, she answered the call and she did. And she served the past six years um, on the Carborough Town Council and ran unopposed to become the first black female mayor of Carborough, North Carolina, which for those of you who do not know North Carolina, which is adjacent to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, she is a phenomenal woman and I've had her on the show before, but she was not mayor elect then. And I am so proud to call her Soror. Welcome back mayor elect Barbara Fushi. Hey, uh, good evening, Sora Pam, um, and thank you for inviting me to be on the show. Um, it's, it's certainly a very exciting time uh, for me and my family, uh, my Sora's friends and supporters, you know, to uh, be able to serve my community um, at this level. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mind blowing. I could I could have never imagined. Uh, years ago that I would find myself um, in this position, but I am answering the call to serve. All right. All right. So you are already so booked and busy. I know that for a fact. <laughs> booked, busy, doing 70 million things and working as a professional woman. 
and Mary. Mm -hmm. How are you going to manage all of this stuff? How are you going to manage being mayor? Of yeah. Yes. And so um, I'm figuring all that out right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, certainly, uh, you know, the mayor's job is one that will be a, um, you know, a bit more time consuming uh, than my life as a council member. I even struggled when I first got on uh, the Carborough Town Council in 2017 with time management. Uh, you know, because I was working, you know, my job and, um, you know, there were the council meetings and all the other meetings and different events that we had to go to. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're also each council member is also linked to anywhere between four and five advisory boards, you know, uh, as a council liaison. Uh, and so we also, you know, attend those meetings like affordable housing and mm -hmm. environment. Um, uh, we have an environmental advisory board, a transportation advisory board. We have 20 plus um, advisory boards in Carborough and each town council member um, is linked to three or four of those advisory boards um, mm -hmm. as a resource. And so I struggle with time management uh, for the first two years mm -hmm. and uh, just, just realized, you know, I had to start, you know, doing some prioritizing and said, hey, you know, I, I this is what the people elected me to do. I still have my full-time job. And so I had to put, you know, things in perspective and, and let go of a couple of things. That's one of the reasons I, I, I'm not a mentor anymore. Um, I enjoyed mentoring um, in the school district. I had three mentees, you know, they're amazing. All of them got out of high school. Some of them went to college, some of them, you know, around here working. Um, but, you know, I had to start prioritizing, you know, because you have to, you know, balance all of that because in the midst of it, you got to get your mind time to rest. You got to get your body time to rest. And so, like, mm -hmm. you, you can't run on 9,000 all the time because also every year, you know, we're getting older, you know, right. and, you know, the capacity, you know, it changes, you know, with age and, and having to sleep, you know, and things of that nature. So um, I right. feel like I'll be able to balance right. it. I think I'll be able to balance it. Okay. All right. All right. So one thing that I really want to make sure that is pointed out and that people are well aware of is that you ran unopposed, which says to me that you did one heck of a job as a town council member for six years for people to say that once you announced that you were going to run, that nobody said, oh, well, we're going against her. Well, I'm going to try too. Well, here, here's Billy Bob over here. He's going to join. But no Billy Bob, no Joe Blow, no Susie Homemaker showed up. And it was just you. And so that speaks a whole lot to your character and to the confidence that people in your town have in you. So with that said, you, I, I read in doing my research, I read where you still said, whether unopposed or not, you still had a campaign to run and you still had to give people reasons why they should come out and cast their vote. What was your platform? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, mine was a community building platform. Um, those of my supporters and and other folks in the community that have followed me from 2017 up until now, mm -hmm. um, you know, they know that I am very community oriented and always in the community at events, you know, or helping people. Um, and so I brought all of that with me uh, to the elected seat, as well as a well-established network of folk, you know, unknowingly when I was working out in the community with other organizations, then I decided to run for elected office. So I brought all those, that network with me. So, you know, the tribe was already established completely unknowingly, right? So it was just through years of community work. And so when I ran, you know, I had a tribe of folks, you know, I had a network of folks, um, you know, who had no problem supporting me um, mm -hmm. and just, you know, were, were ready to take that, that journey with me in 2017. I think I missed your question too. No, you 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 answered it. Oh, did I answer it? Okay. Yeah. What well, one thing I wanted to ask, uh, bring up is that um, this election um, that we just had, November seventh, we in North Carolina. It, thank goodness for um, Senator Natalie Murdoch because mm -hmm. it was her that congregated who you know these different 
things that history making things that were happening. We got a black female mayor in Butner, North Carolina. We got a black female mayor in Henderson, North Carolina. We got you in Carborough, North Carolina. We got um, we have a black mayor reelected in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Queen City. And there was a black mayor, uh, probably a male, ma uh, uh, who um, was elected in Oxford, North Carolina. And mm -hmm. what's so interesting, all of these places are, you know, Butner, Butner, that was by 14 votes. Henderson, I think that was a little bit better, but I could not reach those two ladies. And the woman that was supposed to be on the show tonight, she is out of Ansonville, North Carolina, Angela Carraway, and she beat her incumbent by 66.2% of the vote. And she's never run before. Mm -hmm. So what do you think this portends for 2024? these surprises that we've had in North Carolina, considering what our state legislature has done? I would say look for more surprises. <laughs> That's what I would say. And so we're, what we're talking about now are these, these, um, these turning points at the local level, mm -hmm. uh, you know, seeing, uh, you know, black folk elevating to, to uh, the mayor's seat, uh, both mm -hmm. male and female. So I feel like, um, it's, it's foretelling of things that I hope will come in 2024. I think people um, are looking for change. I think they're ready to embrace change. I think at all levels um, mm -hmm. of government, I mean, everything has just been really, really hard, I think, um, for folks, uh, especially as it relates to the state and um, federal politics. And so mm -hmm. folks look to the local level um, for sure to help soften the blow you know, uh -huh. of, some, of some darts, <laughs> you know, that all of us are, you know, we feel like darts are being thrown at us, right? Almost right. daily. Right. And so right. certainly at the local level um, where the greatest impact is felt for whichever community that that you're a part of, um, it's your local elected officials, you know, mm -hmm. that, that kind of are here to to uh, impact and, and are most impact in, in your everyday lives and your quality of life within the community. Right, right. Well, listen, Angela must have heard us talking her up. She is here now. So everyone, I'm going to introduce Hi, Angela. Yeah, I'm going to bring her up. I'm going to bring her up. Nice. I'm not going to fuss her out too bad, but we're going to bring her up. No, she there good she to go. She came in a good time. <laughs> Hi, Angela. Hi there. Hi. And she looks like she's in the car, so you're moving around. I am. Listen, I am. That's what I'm saying. So something has happened. I'm just gonna mute myself. Okay. Well, I do. I do apologize. I'm so sorry. It, it turned out to be a beautiful day today, and I got caught up in the weather, and I was. I ended up taking my niece and nephews we went out to the mall and i was um i just forgot about the time so i apologize okay okay um, well, well let me introduce you to the audience because um i hadn't of course so you are the you are angela caraway you are the mayor elect of ansonville north carolina and for yeah. clarity yes ansonville for those of us who are not familiar with north carolina Watching the show is a rural town in the central southern Piedmont region of North Carolina, 40 miles away from Charlotte, North Carolina, correct? That is correct. Angela Caraway is an entrepreneur with over 25 years in the hospitality industry. She is the owner of the Caraway Management Group, a full service conference and meeting management company. Uh, in 2007, she founded the Caraway Foundation that promotes and encourages all Anson County residents to pursue their educational goals. It teaches them life skills and get, it helps them gain professional development. In 2016, your foundation has added chronic Ill, the chronic illness component to provide resources to those battling from a 
uh, chronic illness and those who have survived an, an illness. How Angela has managed to do all of this, I will never know and have time to run for mayor. I did the, I said the same thing to Barbara because it seems like busy people get things done, right? But what I want to ask you, and I had mentioned this already before you came, how is it that you beat the incumbent in your town by getting 66.2% of the vote? You are not a um, po politico. From what I see, I didn't see any political experience on, on you. What, no. ha what happened? What happened? What happened? Uh, you know, I think what happened was um, that that the people actually felt like there was a time for change. And um, I would say the incumbent, I didn't see it. And for my own personal reasons with him is the reason why, one of the reasons why I decided to run. But I think that they just wanted to see something different, not someone that um, they wanted someone to that at least showed that they have a heart for the people and that they want the, or the community to move forward. And so I, I, I moved back home in 2021. I bought a building. We renovated it and during the time of the pandemic. And we actually started providing food to the community during the pandemic. Uh -huh. So, you know, those are the, I mean, things that we actually put in action versus just talking about it. Mm -hmm. We talked about it and we did it. Okay. So I wanted um, to make sure that we continue to do those things and the community have been seeing it and they want that to continue. They want to see progression and I want to be able to be the person to help lead the way. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay, guys, hit that like button wherever you're viewing the show, particularly if you are on YouTube, please help me out. It's a free way to support the show. Okay. And so I think, so essentially you were running a campaign and you really weren't running a campaign. You were just doing work in the community. You were visible, booked and busy, like Barbara, doing 50 million things. And it's like, well, why not run, right? Right. And right. that's why you beat them. That's why you slaughtered them. You really <laughs> slaughtered them, right? Yeah, he actually, four years ago, um, won with only 49 votes. Won with only 49 votes. Uh huh. This year, he lost with 49 votes. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and listen, still, people, I mean, Ansonville, Ansonville's total population is, a, the last figure I saw was like 539 people or so. Something like that. Something like that. Give it's, small. Yeah, it's small. Yeah, it's small. It's 400, small. It's 452 people. The, the, um, our, our numbers did go down during the pandemic. Okay. And, um, and then they started, they're beginning to creep up a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. One question that I, I, I want to ask you that, that, I, and that I mentioned too to Barbara, that's weird, is that as I, because I had to look up where the heck Ansonville was, I did not know. And that, and, and I'm not very good with geography anyway, <laughs> to be honest, but what I noticed was that on the roster, everybody who ran for all these different offices were Democrats. Yet, yet, on the state legislative side and on the federal side, everybody's a Republican. So are you all gerrymandered? And you're, you have to be. Yeah. Um, isn't that amazing, right? Yeah. Like, I, um, it, that, that is crazy to me that that happened. Uh, and I, I haven't really, I don't have an answer to why that is the case. Besides the, I think the initial answer is that, you know, unfortunately our culture don't vote. Like folks in our community don't vote. And I was happy to see the amount of people that came out for even the local election, but uh -huh. even in our state federal election, it's like their focus is on just the president's you know, the presidential election, right. nothing yeah. else, and like nothing else matter, but these are the, the elections that matter the most. Right. Um, and so 
I don't, I don't know. It's like, um, the parties we, we got, we have some issues with our local, uh, democratic party too. That's, that's concerning. So mm-hmm. I think there's a little bit of that and just how black folks move around voting. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we just, we have to increase, increase that a little bit more. Right. I know a lot more. Okay. Okay. Barbara. So I'm, I'm so glad we got you, Angela. We, we got you on. Okay. So Barbara, when you were talking about your priorities and whatnot in office, you have a very unique situation being that you are an offshoot from Chapel Hill being in Carborough, which is majority Caucasian. And where Angela is, she's in a majority black town. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I did a lot of research and I think, you know, that it's some interesting history. There's a lot of history. They don't want us to know about your town um, in Ansonville. I know that because it's so little there. And then I went someplace and then I saw where the wiping out of the Native Americans and I thought, okay, this is, it, it you know, something, yeah, it, something it, had it, happened. Amazing. Especially when you start really looking at it, you also find that Anson County was a really large county back in the day. So it, it, I saw that. Yeah, the, our borders or our boundaries were all the way down to the Mississippi River. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. it, it was a, a big county. And um, I mean, so there's there is that history, you know, Sherman's army marched through here. Right. Right. Of, Civil um, War. I, I think there, 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 a lot, a lot happened after the Civil War, and it just—I I don't know. It, 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 it went to hell basket <laughs> and changed and did something. I don't know. But any, yeah. but anyways, we'll have to dig into. I'll, we'll have to unearth that history somehow. We'll figure it out. So, Barbara, getting back to you. I'm sorry. The. What's the first- your your town, Kerrboro, is largely Caucasian, and here you are, this Nubian queen, who is now the mayor elect of Kerrboro. Because of our unique experiences as Black women, and just being a woman, quite frankly, our our viewpoint and how we move and do things will be somewhat different and unique. What mm-hmm. do you think that you will be bringing to the table to steer the ship there in Carboro? Um, yes. So I, what I hope to bring is um, a <laughs> sense of cohesiveness, um, it, particularly among um, a council that will see a lot of its history leave. Um, we're losing three council members, including the current mayor, and to other council mm-hmm. members um, that, that brought a lot of history and process to the town council. But we are also gaining, um, you know, some other folks that I'm very excited about uh, serving with. And mm-hmm. so uh, my job, I believe, and what I hope to do is, is to bring everybody together, you know, around community, uh, because that's who we are here uh, to serve. And that's mm-hmm. why I ran on a community building platform. and. And that's around issues that matter to the entire community, black, white, Latino, or other. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's how I want to start my mayorship out. You know, we've had our share of contentious issues are mm-hmm. here in the last year that have divided community. And, and most recently, um, as recent as, you know, about a week or so ago. And so, you know, there was polarization around those issues. There was divisiveness. Yes, you know, and all this. And so I, I want to start to bring us back together for a little bit of healing because I think parts of the community are really still polarized and divided, you know, because of those issues. And so okay. um, I, I really hope to nurture, you know, and bring more together. Do you do you want to mention, do you feel comfortable mentioning what those issues are? Or that that's polarizing things a bit in Carver. I mean, it's, I mean, all of right, all of them have been public. I mean, none of this is okay. you know how that is. Nothing is, <laughs> you know, it's all of us public. 
So mm -hmm. um, one was um, the Westwood Cemetery. And um, mm -hmm. there was a neighborhood adjacent to the cemetery, mm -hmm. uh, Fidelity and Davy Road neighbors who wanted a portion of the cemetery uh, turned into a pocket park. That was mm -hmm. a very divisive, uh, very divisive issue. Um, we managed to kind of work through that where everyone was, was satisfied. Uh, the mm -hmm. Bowling Creek Greenway uh, okay. was, was another very uh, contentious issue. Um, there, mm -hmm. there were folks on either side. Some people wanted okay. the Greenway, other people didn't, you know, but mm -hmm. we managed to, you know, we took a vote, okay. you know, community was very divided about that. And then most recently, um, a resolution about the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict that passed by a razor thin margin. You know, the mm -hmm. council, it, it was 4-3, it was 4-3. Mm -hmm. You know, the council really? was very divided on that and so was community. Mm -hmm. And so really, I was just go ahead and say what I said publicly mm -hmm. that night that I don't believe and still don't believe that local government should weigh in on these international politics yes. that are so complex and also yes. so divisive. Yes, I agree. And I think because we end up using so much intellectual capital and, and just emotional capital on it when we have so many issues right in front of us that we need to deal with, and we can we we don't need to get into the weeds with that. We can pray and be thoughtful to our our community on both sides, and try to be uh, I think being neutral, compassionately neutral to all is probably the best way forward on something. And, like I, and you know, I just want to say real quickly about that. I do agree with everything that you just said, and certainly. We've heard from folks on, you know, on both sides, you mm -hmm. know, folks that, you know, the resolution centered around the ceasefire. Yes. Um, and, we, and we certainly understand that uh, there, the ceasefire, yes, you know, stop the killing of people. Nobody likes that, right? So I think we can all agree. But certainly there are other elements of it, like the fact that Hamas is a terrorist group, you know, that will keep, you know, doing what they've been doing. And then the hostages, some of which are Americans. And so there, there's a lot going on there. And then think about the Jewish community. Um, mm -hmm. You know, our Jewish community, we've heard from them and, and the fear and anxiety that they feel, yeah. you know, the anti-Semitism and everything associated with that. So, if you, you know, there is no resolution that can capture all that. Yes, the ceasefire is good. Yes, stop killing people. Yes, by all means. Yeah. But certainly, yeah. you know, the resolution would have to be all-encompassing. And the complexity of it, I just... Mm -hmm. You know, I just could never see a resolution that would hold all that. Right, right, right. It, it's it's so complex. Um, one of our guests says, I know one of the things that has been discussed at certain town halls was the expansion of school lunch meal plans, regardless of income. Is this an objective for either of your terms as mayor? I'll let but, um, Mayor elect Caraway. Did you mm -hmm. want to go first or I can go first? It doesn't matter. Marilla Caraway, I've been calling y'all by your first names because it gets <laughs> tongue tied. Do you want to answer that question, Angela? Yes, you can. Uh, about can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, actually, our, in our in our yeah in our in our county, um, all of our oh no, I think she's got she's con connectivity, crazy. connectivity because I think she's in the car. But yeah. I, I'll go ahead and until okay. she comes back in. And okay. so this was about um, um, school lunches, mm -hmm. expansion of, of school lunches. And certainly that's something I support, but it's not in the purview of the Carborough Town Council. That would be in the purview of the Chapel Hill Carborough City Schools Board of Education. Okay. And the Orange County and the Orange County Board of County Commissioners, which of course helps to fund um, the school board. Okay. And I do support that, by the way. Okay. Okay. Um, Angela. Yeah. Sorry about that. The signal went out. Oh. Were well, you driving like that? It's hard. Can you drive in and out of reception? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can what you did, hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. Our school board focuses on that. Like so. Yes. Um, but I do know for a fact. I do know that all our students eat for free. So we don't have, um, 
free or reduced lunch now because of a program that we have through NIH. And, mm-hmm. um, and so we have, the kids don't have to worry about that or parents don't have to worry about a certain income. That. Uh-huh. But that is something that even if so, that was our, it would be our school board that would be, fo- that would focus on that. Right. Right. That would go through the school board. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. So, and then your County commissioners are through Anson County, County commissioners, right? Yeah. Correct. And each yeah. one represents a district. So basically they represent, uh, represents a municipality that um, so there are seven municipalities within our county okay okay all right and here's another question I have continued to say it's our time my robo call is wake up sleeping giants and think <laughs> so this is um she's what she's referring to is it's our time meaning that black people as collective, she is from Detroit, need to get up and, and think about what we're doing, being proactive in our voting and, and what have you. And to to wisely pick out and plan our choices for voting, this is you would do with anything else. Um, Barbara, you, not Barbara, Angela, you mentioned uh, prior the how people feel um, that the presidential uh, campaigns are the most important and they don't really have a firm grasp on, on what is important and why local elections matter. Do you think that with your winning this local election that maybe people will be more tuned into it or that you can use this as a point of education for people? Because 2024 is nipping at our heels and before you came on, Barbara and I discussed at how well North Carolina did with all of these surprise results. You know, um, we got uh, a black female. I'm just going to repeat myself. We got a, a black female uh, mayor in Butner, Henderson, Carborough, Ansonville, uh, Charlotte, um, a black male in Oxford. I think there's a black male uh, uh, mayor in um, mm, was Kinston. So we have people in these rural pockets that, and not all rural, but you know what I'm saying. A lot of them are in these smaller municipalities that oftentimes do turn out very red in our state. Mm-hmm. And what what do you what do you think that we can do to counter or to e- help educate people about voting before the before 2024 gets um when it before we get full thrown into the elections for 2024 yeah i think more of this um you know talking about the importance of voting now, that was one of my things that I had to push and educate them on because a lot of a lot of people felt like they didn't need to vote you know Mm -hmm. oh I don't in the local elections I vote Mm -hmm. for the president so I had to do a lot of education around that as -hmm. well as demonstration on how if you don't vote how that's a vote for the the other person Mm -hmm. okay very good very good um, Barbara, I don't, I don't suppose you have that problem, but what, what do you, um, what do you think about how you're going to approach 2024 and you're helping get others elected um, in our state of North Carolina that you feel are worthy uh, candidates? Um, and so um, we kind of started it with, with my. Uh, my recent mayoral campaign, when mm-hmm. we canvassed and, and dropped literature, we also left uh, information, you know, to just kind of prompt people, hey, don't just vote in these local elections, yes, but also get ready for 2024. You know, we did have these conversations with folks at their doors um, mm-hmm. because we did, run a, we did run an unopposed race. So we had a little bit of space there because there was nobody else, you know, to be talking about or, or anything like that. And so 
we use our, our canvassing and our lit drop time, you know, to talk to people not only about my election, but of course, hey, just a reminder, there's more voting coming, <laughs> you know. I know for us, it's our county commissioners and our district judges are coming. They'll start filing next month, you know, and then the larger uh, elections next year, you know, of course, the governor of North Carolina, the lieutenant governor, presidential. I mean, we, we, we have a lot. And so it's about getting folks queued up um, you know, for voting and, um, you know, and why it's important, right? So it's, it's really about our lives, right. you know, everybody's right. life, you know, why it's important. And um, I've done some work with uh, voter education. I love voter education, you know, to just remind people why it's, a, it's important to vote for district court judges, why it's important to vote for every judge all the way down the ballot. Yes, uh, because yes. in the end, it does it, it makes a difference, you know, yes. who, who sits on the bench. Yes, um, it does. And so, yes. voter education is, is is tops for me, and I also try to use um, my platform for whatever position I'm in to to push mm -hmm. voter education and to remind people how important it is to vote. Not at one time, every single time the polls are open, you need to be there when the door opens. That's right. <laughs> That's every time, right. No matter what the election is. Every single time. Every single time. So, Angela, mm -hmm. to you, to your point, what is the number one thing that you are focusing, that you will be focusing on as the mayor of Ansonville? The, the number one thing I'm going to be focusing on is community. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And just bring in the community together. We have um, countywide, we've had a lot of issues um, dealing with race and being divisive there. And so for me in our municipality um, is bringing the community together to work together. That is mm -hmm. not just Angela. Angela can't do it by herself. But to bring the community and the, and that and, the, and bringing the community together means bringing our youth in with this conversation. So it's not just the adults talking about what the youth want and what the youth need. It's to bring the youth in in the conversation as well, and then mm -hmm. also to talk amongst ourselves across each other municipality. So mm -hmm. to have conversations about what they're doing, how we can support. She went out on us a little bit. Right. I'm going to read this. Can we go work okay. together to get. Okay. Okay. And I, but you know what? I'm sorry. What, That's what okay. She, uh -huh. She's in the car. That's uh -huh. why. Go ahead, Barbara. No, I was just going to say it's just a really amazing how Mayor elect Caraway is kind of aligning with what I'm, we're both saying the same thing. You know, we, we, we don't want the divisiveness. We want to bring community together, you know, and that's, you know, you know, honestly, and I've always heard this, that black women are the nurturers of the community. You know, we nurture, we build, you know, I heard that a long time ago, you know, we nurture, we build, you know, we feed into, you know, I just moving quietly, you know, doing our work. And so I, I it's nice to hear, a mayor let Caraway, you know, share the same vision for her community that I have for mine, especially in light of all the divisiveness that we've had here lately. Right. And and yet you guys are in very two very distinct areas of the state. Mm -hmm. You know, few hours apart. Mark Lee says that Rocky Mount almost got a sister. Rocky Mount, North Carolina, for those who don't know. Teresa Austin Stokes. I heard her name. She forced to run off, and I expect she will run again. Okay. I think Rocky Mount, I think their city council, Rocky Mount has um, all-male city council, if I'm not mistaken. Do they? Mark Lee? Mark Lee, does, um, does Rocky Mount have an all-male city council? Do you know? I think, I think it does. Mm -mm, I don't know. I don't know. He has another question. He says, what are you guys' stance on sanctuary cities and how important is the Dobbs decision in getting the women 
vote out. Angela, well, do you have a? Do you have a? I, I don't. I, I don't know what. What is your stance on sanctuary cities, Angela? Do you well, have? Barbara, do you, you want to go? Yeah, I, I was just going to say, um, I believe North Carolina has banned uh, <laughs> sanctuary cities. Um, I think they have. Um, and it, 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 I believe I heard that there is a restriction on uh, municipalities from uh, refusing to cooperate, you know, with the with the federal immigration and, and customs enforcement um, officials. So um, I, th I thought I heard that somewhere, yeah. but I, I don't know if there's been, you know, an update, you know, oh, on. That. I remember there was talk discussion back and forth, but I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. Let's see. There's another question yeah. here. Should there be preferable changes in the control of the North Carolina government regarding the political party? Would either of you push for such changes at the state level? Well, um, preferable I changes. What? What? I what don't do you know what that means. Preferable changes. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that means. In in control of the state government, and and Mark does say yes. Rocky Mount is all male. We gotta we gotta change that up, ladies. Yeah, I thought so. I was there for the North Carolina BMO Summer Conference. Um, they had it in Rocky Mount this past summer. The Black elected municipal officials. Um, and I, I was looking at their website and stuff, and I said, oh, they got all me in, you know? Mm -hmm. That's oh. interesting. Let's mm -hmm. see. Question. Think, did, did, you say, did you say that Kinston had a female mayor? I, 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 no, it's still, it, it's still Kinston, Don Terrio Hardy. It it's still male. Don Hardy, I believe. In Kinston? Did she say Kinston? Uh huh. She was asking about Kinston. It's still Don Terrio Hardy, I think. Yeah, he's Don a Hardy. young man. He's a young man, isn't he? Nope. Uh huh. He's a little young guy. He's pretty dynamic. Very smart. Uh huh. Let's see. Um, Miss Butler says we need sisters like you to lead. We are well qualified for every office. Don't stop. Keep moving up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. Let's see. Did she explain Can her? I can I say something? Yes, yes. Can I say something? Sure. Real quick. You will, you will want to go to the first. Oh, text. okay. Taj Marie said you will want to go to the first text. Oh, I see. Was see, it about the preferable? I even, yeah, I didn't even see that first text, girl. I didn't even see, <laughs> I didn't see it. Sorry. Are there restrictions on municipal I mean, this <laughs> Yeah, North Carolina is not a rent control state. No, we're not uh, rent control. What's what's the second part of that? Was that was her the question? Second part is this: Should there be a preferable changes in the control of the NC government regarding the political? I still don't quite understand. Yeah, I don't quite understand. I don't either, get it. But North North she Carolina might, is not a rent. Might, a rent control state. But let me tell you something, and I think everybody knows this. Our North Carolina General Assembly, you know, they're 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 inching closer and closer, you know, in on uh, municipals municipalities' um, ability to like govern. You know, they inch in periodically with different changes in the general statutes and things from which we operate. <laughs> and, you know, it really changes the amount of authority uh, that we have. And so I've seen that. You know, I've seen that come, you know, here and there and the different things that they do over in Raleigh. And so, I mean, they are impeding on local authority to some degree and more so than they have in the past. too. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this, um, Mayor Elect Angela Carraway. I finally got it all out. The title. Mayor what, Elect. <laughs> what do you think about um, you probably don't have an issue I'm assuming with affordable housing where you are, or do you? Because you're not too far away from Charlotte. And I was just thinking 40 miles away from Charlotte, if, they're in, if their housing is going up, people might decide, well, let me go look and live in a bedroom community and commute in. So what are you having issues with yeah. affordable housing? 
Yes. The problem is that oh. we don't have, um, a, yeah, we don't have enough housing, period. So we don't have enough affordable housing because there are people who have a lot of the land that doesn't want to sell the land for others to build. And so you oh. have problems with finding land to build on if you can afford to build, but then there is not mm-hmm. enough um, income-based housing around. So there are a few uh, apartments around or, um, you know, I would say, you know, income-based housing around Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some, but there are, but there's a lot of, there's, we have quite a few section eight homes or Uh apartments, but not, I mean, even for myself, just trying to find an affordable house or an apartment there is not here because it's not built. So either I have to build myself or find someone that's renting their house and hopefully mm-hmm. will rent it at a, at a reasonable rate. And then, yes, we have people coming from the Charlotte area down mm-hmm. to our the most western part of our county to mm-hmm. build in those areas. So, so um, but the, house, the, the housing market is a little bit more expensive than I thought it should be. <laughs> that I think it should be. But uh-huh. the problem is there's no housing available at all. Wow. Yeah. That's so I mean, what's 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 worse, no housing at all or what? That's uh, that's interesting. And surprising yeah. I, no, I, I mean we have it that uh, is a major issue at, along with you know broadband access around oh, yes. um and then also jobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Jobs. The jobs. Because yeah. I was, because you're, when I was researching Ansonville, your main um, in, uh, industry is agriculture still. It's agriculture, correct? It is. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh huh. It certainly is. We have over 400 plus farms just in Anson County. Okay. In the entire county. Okay. So, but our primary, um, I would say our primary employer is the school system, our local school system, then the correctional facility, and then there are a couple of uh, manufacturers that are still here, but it's mainly dealing with um, cotton. Oh, so, so you still have textiles you know, and Yeah, so. Oh. We, uh, how we do, we have a few textile uh, company okay well okay. Yes. oh that's interesting that i didn't know i didn't know mm-hmm. i'm, I'm kind of sure I'm I'm happy to hear that they're still here because you know we thought they all left yeah but okay and and they um so are they manufacturing any clothes or are they just making fabric or what are they what kind of uh i'm just being nosy what kind of um manufacturers are they yeah oh. produce the yarn for nike or even the space shuttle okay the space suits that they wear so it depends oh. on the the factory yeah okay all right it's in camp well, <laughs> i'm happy to hear that that it still exists here in North Carolina. I'm glad to see that a, a native industry is still existing. That's that's good. That's good. Okay, here. She says, I'm talking about the restrictions on North Carolina on municipalities setting the minimum wage and rent control. That's what my question is pertaining. Okay, that's much clearer. Um, Barbara, you want to take that? Uh, Yeah, I'll take a stab at it. So um, I think Taj and Marie is asking, do we, would we advocate for it or would we uh, push for it? And if we had any power, (laughs) you know, there, and my answer would be yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I know here in uh, Carboro, which is in Orange County, um, we do um, have the Orange County Living Wage uh, program. 
mm -hmm. um, that certifies businesses that pay an actual living wage. You know, it's a growing list, you know, businesses in Orange County. Um, we also have, you know, the issues, you know, around rent and rent increasing to the point where people can't pay. We get phone calls from people, you know, all the time, you know, talking about their rent going up. But, you know, everybody knows North Carolina is not um, a rent control state. Mm -hmm. And so um, this is a position that we find ourselves in. It's a very fixed, antiquated, um, aggravating uh, position um, because I think not acting on either one of these issues is hurting all of the people of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know in Durham County, where I am, um, we have one of our bigger issues is that we have this month-to-month -month rent type of situation going on that's very popular with landlords that you just can be a month to month type of person and and unfortunately what that does it exacerbates the number of people who are then evicted because it's that month to month thing it's really i don't know i don't agree with it but at any rate it exists it exists so ladies i was going to um i love to say all the time to acknowledge women power first off and black girl magic <laughs> since we can do that so barbara what is your woman power what is your black girl magic you kind of oh. it earlier but what is it what is my well i mean i think my black girl magic is um is a combination of several things I certainly stand on the shoulders of a whole lot of folks, you know, even being able to run for the seat, you know, for mayor um, and only the sec second black person in Carver's entire history um, mm -hmm. to, to ever hold uh, the seat of the mayor. There are a lot of giants mm -hmm. um, in our community, both living and not, that have paved the way for me to be able to do what I'm doing today. So I, I pay homage, you know, to them uh, first and foremost. I also have a very tight group. Um, of mentors and sister friends. I lean heavily into my church and, uh, you know, with my pastor, you know, counsel with my pastor, you know, mm -hmm. and I take care of myself, you know, uh, as best I can. This, this job will be taxing, you mm -hmm. know, it'll be a little, it'll be more than, than, you know, just being on the town council. And so that means you have to set some boundaries, right? So you got to set boundaries, you know, get, your, get yourself some me time, you know, some time where you're sleeping appropriately, so that you can go out and serve and do the work um, of the people. And so putting all that together, that creates the uh, black girl magic. You know, a lot of times with black women, you know, we get tied into the superwoman complex. Yes. And I'm guilty yes. too. You know, where we got them do everything, be everywhere. You know, we got to, you know, it's gotta be done, you know, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show up, you know, but certainly our uh, rest is resistance. Uh, the book uh, that Trisha Hershey put out not too long ago, she's also on social media. But, but she talks about rest, you know, against you know, this war that we all fight, you know, out in the world, you know, trying to make it um, a mm -hmm. better place and keep it moving forward and not go back in time. And so certainly all those things together, you know, help keep me balanced. And I'm part of that Black Girl Magic. <laughs> all right. All right. So Angela. Angela, yeah. what is your black girl magic, honey? Because I listen, you've done a lot of things, include I didn't I, I, I was going to mention it earlier, including having fought a fierce battle and being a cancer survivor. Yeah. And doing all that you do. What is your black girl magic? Um, my mom, my mother's in the car with me and she just said it for me is God. And I really lean heavy on Proverbs three, five through six, you know, so I lean not on my own understanding. And mm -hmm. I do trust in God in all thy ways. I, you know, mm -hmm. acknowledge him. And so I, I, I feel like he really is like my black girl or she really is my black girl magic because I trust me, I would not be doing this. This was not what I um, would have seen even six years ago. I didn't. Um, so I, it, it definitely to do. And I, and I know that family and, mm -hmm. um, and my faith 
is, mm-hmm. is what keeps me and that's what keeps me going. And that's the magic mm-hmm. for me um, and, and mm-hmm. my community. And the love that I have for this community is what uh, keeps me going. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. This is your this so, is your hometown, so I know this is my hometown. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Mark, Mark Lee is asking a question of you, Angela. Was it School Magazine that Angela was working with when we first worked together? Did yes. you work with Mark Lee? Yep. Okay. Yes, I did, Mark Lee. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. School Magazine. Yes, I that was my first um, job at commission, commission job, uh, straight commission. So, but I worked with Mark on on that project and Travis Mitchell. Okay. So yes, Mark, good to see you. Glad to for you to be on. Yeah, he's in the chat. He he pops up all the time. Well, good. listen, ladies, it's that time. I have a, a, I have enjoyed you all so much. And um, I think, uh, you know what, Angela, I'm going to keep digging about Ansonville. Cause and I, and I appreciate that. Thank I, you. I, I just, I can't, I can't take this limited history for an answer. I just cannot. Because I believe yeah. there's more there that they don't want us to know. And Barbara, my soror, I appreciate you as always. Always, always. And, and I would love to uh, connect with Barbara because... I, you know, I've never been on the town council. I've never, so I don't have that um, experience. I have a huge passion for my community and I know how I was treated whenever I moved back to my hometown from a business perspective of how the mayor treated me. And I don't want that. I, I want it to be the spokesperson that I wish I had for that represented the town. And so I, I, that's what I want to be. I'm not going to be the quiet, not doing anything mayor. Like I want to, I want to, I want to be that mayor that's involved. So I don't know what that's like. That's, it sounds great to me right now, but mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I don't have, um, I have a bunch of people that love me and support me, but I don't, ha- don't know of anyone that I can connect with. Uh, especially a female that looks like me that have have experience and being on the town council besides my mother, but I need not, not a, but, and need someone else that can say that can help that can direct me, that can push me, that can do those things. So I'm looking for that. I, I, I am a member now of the Facebook of um, NC BMO. The crazy thing is that I used to organize, the North Carolina Alliance of Black Elected Officials Conference, because I also have an event planning business. So I used to be the planner for that. And now I'm a participant. So I'm um, I'm open and just, I want to be a sponge and soak it up because I do feel like there there's another step, a couple of more steps for me in this, in this work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I can give her your information when we get off or even when we sign off to tonight, you can exchange information on the screen still. But at any rate, it's nine o'clock, folks. I appreciate my audience. I appreciate you all so much. Please hit that thumbs up button, especially if you are on YouTube or wherever. Please hit subscribe as well. Help support these um my my channel i need the support thank you all so much let's wave them off goodbye good night everyone